Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be working in C++. Uh, we've taken a bit of a break from this in our challenges, but today we're going to be working on how to uh, both read and write JSON. Uh, JSON is, I, I believe it stands for Java, let me just, uh, it's JSON is JavaScript Object Notation. So. It's essentially a very concise way of representing data uh, in a file, and I will give you an example right now. So, in my project, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file, and keep it like that, open, and then I'm going to save it as data.json, and I'm going to put it in this solution over here. Alright, so like I said, JSON is a very useful way to store data, and its notation looks like uh, this. So, a very basic example would be something like this. So, you got employees, and there's a dictionary uh, where keys are mapped to values. So this is like your Java hash map, this is like your C map. This is like your Python dictionary. Um, and let's say employees is mapped to a list or an array, which is denoted by the square brackets. And this might have another dictionary nested inside of it, and this has properties, so name. It might, might be uh, Alexander, uh, age, uh, 30, city, NY, or in a string, NY, and then uh, let's let's have a boolean property. So man, is manager, and that's going to be false because Alexander is not a manager. He did not become president. So this actually has to become Puerto Rico. Uh, and this will become country. Um, let's see. We had another employee. So. You separate items in the list and in the dictionary using commas. Uh, let's say we had a second employee and name was um, George. Uh, his age was 54 or just 50. Country US. And his manager is true because he was president. Um, so essentially what our goal is to be able to create some sort of data structure that allows us to access both the dictionary and the list and all these properties in a uniform way. So essentially create a template uh, for accessing this and then we'll eventually get to writing uh, or adding to it uh, and we'll modify the properties as well. Alright, so uh, this we have to include in our project. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is just create our main.cpp file. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and include iostream int main std uh, cout and we'll say hello json. Let's just run this to make sure everything piles properly. And all right, good. That means that our IDE is ready to go. Okay, uh, before we get into actually parsing this code, uh, we have to actually uh, create a utility file because we want to have. There are some methods that we'll have to know uh, for testing and for reading and writing the file. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new item, and I'll actually just do this in this one file, and I'll just call it util.hpp, and this is a type of C++ file that allows you to write headers and source code, uh, and this can be put in the, in the include file, so if you put this in an include directory, it will include all the headers, and then it will also define those headers using the source code in the file. Um, so let's go and uh, so if ndef so if not defined util hpp 
define util HPP as whatever this is, and then end if. Uh, and then we also want to include a string. We just will need that. And then for our utility methods, we're going to have uh, we're going to put them all in a namespace. So I'm just going to call this namespace JSON like that. Uh, and the utility methods we are going to have is bool is num, and then that just tells us a character is a number. Uh, bool uh, first and last match and last match. Uh, this will be for testing to, uh, to see if something, if the JSON object that we have is a dictionary or a list. So this method will return true if the f if the first and last characters of string str matches the first char and the last char. So it essentially starts with and ends with, and they're both true. Um, we'll need a uh, method for string contains, str contains, and that will just be string and then char c. And then the last one is is empty. And that is just a char c. Alright, uh, let's start at the top. So, uh, is number. Um, we're essentially just going to say return str contains and we're gonna so the string that it must be in is is uh zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and then the period for a decimal point uh and then c so we'll write this method in a second um but essentially we're just using this method to call it and we're specifying what string we want to have. so we're, we're using this as sort of a template and then we're uh, making it more specific up here. Alright, first and last map. First and last... Let me get some. Okay, so for first and last match, uh, we essentially just want to see if the first character, so the string at zero, so return str at zero is equal to first and the last character, so str at str.length minus one uh, is equal to, hold on, is equal to last, just like that. Um, for string contains, it's just another one line method. Uh, it's return str.find c uh, is not equal to st string and pose, and end pose just means it doesn't have a position. Uh, so if this method if, if this method returns something that is not end pose, uh, then it's in the string. And then for the last one is empty. It just we just want to see if this character is white space or not. Uh, so return c is equal to a space, or c is equal to a new line, or oh oh that wasn't supposed to happen. I close to, okay, uh, whatever. Uh, C is equal to a space, C is equal to a new line, or C is equal to a tab. And those are just the three white spaces that we'll be dealing with uh, in our, uh, well, in our, uh, when we parse JSON, but, um, I actually might need to test this because I don't know if we need the space in there, but I, I don't know. Um, hmm. we'll leave it for now, and we'll test it later on. All right, so that is util.hpp. We can close that out now, and we can also just we'll just leave the data.json on the right. Now, um, and the next file we're going to create is another header file, or our first he true header file. And this is just going to be called json.h. Okay, um, it's going to be if and def json.h uh, define json.h and if, and then uh, we're going to include a couple of things. So include uh, map, include 
vector include string and include initialize your list. Um, so essentially, what we're going to try and do is create one uniform class that allows us to store uh, maps, the, these dictionaries in a map, and these list items in in a uh, in a vector. But the type is not going to be specific in the vector, so it'll be like an an STD vector that contains integers, it contains strings, it contains booleans, it contains other dictionaries, it contains other vectors, stuff like that. So we'll essentially have to create a template class that allows, that allows us to uh, have a uniform uh, representation of each JSON object or JSON uh, value. Alright, so we'll be working in namespace JSON again. I usually like to do this for my libraries. Um, and what we're going to do is, the first thing we'll do actually is we'll, we're going to create an enum. So an enum just allows us to have, it's essentially just gives us uh, the opportunity to just create a list of values uh, that's not in a vector or anything. So enum class, uh, JSON type, and essentially we're just going to store all the JSON values here. So we'll do JSON string, uh, JSON num, uh, JSON bool, JSON list, and JSON object. Just like that. Uh, so once we, so we'll be using this class to kind of represent the, our types in that template class that I was talking about. All right. So now let's go ahead and we are going to create our. Uh, JSON data class. So class uh, JSON data. Um, and it's going to have both public and protected members. And the difference between the two, public can be accessed by any class and protected by can only be accessed by this class and its inherited class. Private can only be uh, can only be accessed by this class, but it cannot be accessed by any inherited class. All right, so the first thing, first method, or the most basic, basic method we're gonna have is a parse method. So it's gonna be a static method. So static JSON data parse, and we're gonna just gonna pass in the string representation of it. So that'll be like, um, like if we take in a string from a file, we'll have to, we will have to um, uh, write that out. Let me just check something here. So essentially, we're gonna to have to get this this string from somewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and create another class above this, and it'll be class JSON util. The difference between this util and uh, the util.hpp that we created is that the util.hpp is more general. It's not specific to JSON, but this will be. Um, so in our uh, JSON util class, uh, we're only gonna have public methods, and they're all gonna be stat public static methods. Uh, so we're going to static a method that returns JSON data, and it's going to be read, it's called read, and we're just going to pass in a file name. Uh, we'll have a static standard string, uh, read file, and this is const char star file name. Uh, next we'll have static bool write, and we'll pass in char star file name and the JSON data value. So we're essentially writing the JSON object to a file and then static bool uh, write file. And we'll have const char star uh, file name and then the content. But this time it's a string. So we can actually move the write file and read file to the util.hpp because those aren't uh, JSON specific either. Um, so the only methods in the JSON util, util class will be read and write uh, that return and take in JSON data values. Um, 
So the first thing, well, before we move on, let's actually just go ahead and write these methods over here. The write file and read file. All right. Um, so for write file, uh, all it's going to be is std of stream. Oh, we actually need to include uh, file stream up top. So include f stream. That's the include that we need for the header we need for dealing with files. So uh, we'll need std of stream because we're outputting to a file, and it's going to be file, and we'll open it up in file name. Uh, we need to check to see if the file is open. So if file dot is underscore open, uh, and we're going to do file, we're going to pass the content to the file because they're both streams. So we can do that. Uh, did I? Oh, I'm I'm working in the wrong one. Make sure you're working in the right file now. Uh, so because they're both streams, we can just use this operator here, and that just passes all the content to the file, uh, and then we'll close the file. And then return true because it was successful. And if the file was not open, we're going to return false because it could not, it could not access the file. Uh, for read file, this is going to look similar to what we did with OpenGL and the fragment and vertex shaders. Uh, so I'll need a, another include for just string stream. So include s string, uh, and all it's going to be is we're going to have uh, std if stream, uh, we're going to open it up in file name. We're going to have a string to return, and that's just equal to a blank string, and then at the end we'll return that uh, string. Uh, to modify that string, we want to say if file dot is open, so kind of the same stuff. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and say standard string stream, oh, ss, ss, oh, can I say? Can't, no, I need to rename. I can't say that. That's that's not. I can't do that. S stream. How about that? Uh, S stream. Uh, we just want to put in file dot rd buff. So read the buffer. Uh, and then ret is equal to ss dot str. Um, and then at the end, we just want to close the file. Oh, I can't use ss. Damn. Alright, so those are, that's all the util methods now. So we can close out a util.hpp. Okay. Now, back in json.h. Um, we have our json util methods, and we'll actually go ahead and create those now, because those are, those are going to be two-line methods. Uh, so we can go ahead and, um, let's just create a new, a source file, or actually, let, let's just put it in here. Uh, so read, uh, I'm just going to put it in this file just because it's, they're, they're pretty short, so. Uh, so all read is going to do uh, is, it'll just say return JSON data, parse, and we're going to pass in JSON or we'll just say uh, we need to include the util up here. So include util.hpp. And the method we're going to call is read file. And we're going to pass in file name. Uh, the logic with this is read file returns a string, which we need, which we can pass into the parse method. And from that, it will return a, a uh, value. It, it will return a, uh, a class that represents JSON data. Um, and for the write method, not politically, just the, the WRITE method. Uh, it's just going to be return JSON util, or um, it's just going to return a write file, actually. And we're going to pass in file name and val uh, dot stringify. This is a method that we have not uh, defined yet, um, but we can go ahead and do that now. So this will just be std string stringify. 
and it's going to be a class, it's it's not going to be a static method because we want to stringify the existing data for this class here. Um, so yeah, that's the utility methods and that's all we'll need uh, for now. So I can, so we're done there. Okay, now let's get into uh, the meat of the JSON data class. So uh, JSON data, it's going to have uh, several several properties. Uh, so in private, in public, it's going to have a type. So JSON type type, and then protected, it's going to have several different variables. Uh, because in C plus plus we can't uh, kind of modify, or I, I tried this in in a. In, in testing it and I, I wasn't able to like create a, a specific value for each extended class so the way we're gonna have to do it is we're gonna have to create a different value uh, for each type so it'll look like std string s val uh, we'll have double n val for the number uh, we'll have bool b val uh, we'll have std vector and this vector is going to be of json data and that's going to be lval and then std map mapping a string key because keys in a json dictionary can only be strings to json data will be an object value so these all correspond to these types up here um you'll see why we have to do this later on but yeah all right so those are the protected members because we only want the the inherited classes to be able to actually access those. So I'll go ahead and put this up here. Okay. Um, after stringify, we'll need a uh, std string get type. Uh, get the type as a string. And then now let's actually go ahead and work on the constructor. So we're going to have. Uh, I believe it's, I, from what I'm seeing, it's uh, nine different constructors. So it's gonna, it's gonna be me. Uh, so the first one is uh, JSON data, JSON type, type. And in default, it's just equal to JSON type. And it's gonna be just a JSON object. And we'll just in it, we'll just do it here because it's only initializing uh, value values in the class. So uh, type type, and that's all it is. And just empty brackets there. The second constructor will be initializing it with a string. So uh, when we declare a object of type JSON data, uh, we want to give the user or the programmer the flexibility to have this class automatically detect what type. Uh, in you want because uh, we, we just because we don't want to add too much uh, excess code to actually writing it uh, so we'll say JSON data and we'll pass in a, a string val and we'll initialize the type as JSON oh, uh, JSON uh, type string and the s val as val. Um, for the third one, uh, we're going to have double. Uh, so for JSON number, we're actually going to have three different constructors. Uh, there, will, there will be a double, an integer, and a float. Uh, so JSON data double val. Uh, and this will just say type is JSON type JSON num. And the n val, the, the numerical value, is going to be val. Uh, and we can actually just copy this two more times for integer and float because the only thing we need to modify is this double becomes now integer and float. And these are all safe conversions to double. So we can just put these in here and we won't lose any data. Okay, um, next is going to be a Boolean. So JSON data bool val. And this will be a type of JSON type, uh, JSON pool, and the bval, the bval, 
Uh, next we'll do a vector. So JSON data um, std vector. That's going to be JSON data val. And it's going to... Oh. Uh, we're going to make a type. Uh, JSON type. Uh, JSON list. And the uh, lval becomes val. And the next constructor is going to be using with a parameter called an initializer list. Uh, so in our main.cpp file, uh, an, an initializer list would be something like, let me just go ahead and include json.h up here. Uh, an initializer list would be like set standard vector uh, int would be is equal to one, two, three, four, or five. I can't count. Um, but you can do that. Uh, if we did not have an initializer list possi possibility, it wouldn't read this as a vector. It would just read it as an, uh, as an array, because you can also initialize arrays like this. And the same works for maps, too. If we had std map uh, from uh, int to int, uh, and that's going to be m, the way you initialize maps with the with an initialized list is through uh, a list of pairs. So one, two, uh, three, four, and this would become one colon two comma three colon four, something like that. So these are initialized lists. I'll put a link somewhere where you can learn more about it. Um, so what this this is going to look like is JSON data. And the parameter is going to be std initializer list, and all it is is going to be JSON data, and we're going to pass in uh, that. And the type is going to be JSON type, JSON list, and the lval will be initialized with val. Um, yeah, that works. All right. Uh, next thing is the object, so the map. So JSON data uh, std map std string uh, JSON data val. Oh, not a dash, an underscore. Yeah. Uh, uh, initialize the type as JSON type uh, JSON object this time, and the O val is, is initialized as j val. And then like we did with the vectors, we're going to have uh, an initializer list for here too. So JSON data uh, standard initializer list. Uh, this time it's going to be of a pair, so standard pair of standard string and JSON data. Make sure that's two colons, not a colon, and not a colon and a semicolon. So like that, uh, and this is just going to be called val. Just remove those spaces in there. Don't know why I did it. But. And this is going to initialize the type as JSON type colon colon JSON uh, object as well. And then oval will be initialized as val. Alright, so I believe that's actually 10 constructors. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So yeah, that's 10 constructors right now, and that's heavy stuff right there, but... How long have we been live for, actually? Um, it's been... 30 minutes. Yeah, we've been moving pretty slowly. This morning has been slow, but nothing you can do. Nothing I can do, actually. Oh, what happened here? Oh, um, the error we're getting over here is uh, this standard string has to be a const. That's one of the nitpicky things that I came up uh, with, or ran into when I was testing this, but this has to, this first parameter here has to be a const uh, standard string. Don't know why, but it has to be that. 
All right, so that's all the constructors, and now we're gonna go through. Uh, okay, so I'll just put a comment up here. Uh, and next we're gonna go through the operators. Um, so if we wanna get this to look a little bit like JavaScript or Python where it's very fluent. Uh, I think we've dealt with this before in Python or something. Uh, it's so, it's very fluent to be able to uh, just parse JSON and uh, make stuff equal to other stuff. Um, so what I believe the best course of action to do is to override the operator equals method for this class so that we can actually just automatically cast um, cast the values to uh, JSON data and to their respective classes. Um, so let's go ahead and This off, we're gonna have 10, actually. It's gonna be the exact same as this. Uh, we're gonna have 10 uh, operator equal methods. I think it's gonna be the same as the constructor. I actually wanna test it a little bit. Don't type anything in yet. So for operator equals with the string parameter, uh, we're essentially gonna we're gonna go ahead and say uh, type is equal to JSON type um, JSON string and sval is equal to val. So yeah, we're gonna have to type out ten of these like we did with the constructor. Um, so let's. Uh, Go ahead and do that. Um, we actually need um, we need to also a const char star. I actually missed that up top. Uh, we're gonna need a a constructor for const char star. So JSON data. Uh, it's gonna be const char star value, and that'll be type JSON type and JSON string. And then sval initialize as value. Why am I getting this? Oh. Alright, uh, we can go ahead and just copy this. Uh, I don't want to have to type this out. Operator equal for uh, double value. Uh, so type is going to equal JSON type JSON num. Oh, what's going on? Something's happening. Operator 
operator equal for vector. So S and S and vector of JSON data found. Uh, we're going to make the type is equal to JSON type and uh, uh, JSON list. And L found is equal to val. What's up with the. Did I miss a semicolon? Void operator equal. Uh, we can actually just copy this again because we'll be doing the initializer list now. So a standard initializer list. And then finally for the maps. So STD. Uh, we need a map. Oh, never mind. Void operator equal, and we're going to do a standard map string and json data val and the type is going to equal json type json object and oval is equal to val let me copy and paste this for the initializer list of the pairs as well so standard initializer list of standard pair of, remember it's const standard string, and I'm still not sure why I'm, see I think that should be the same, or 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, am I missing one? Oh, I didn't put the boolean in there, that's why. Uh, void operator equal bool val type is equal to json type json pool eval is equal to val. I'm not sure why it's not. I must have missed a semicolon somewhere. in a second. So there are a reference to operator, uh, square brackets, and index. And then we're going to return L bound at ID. And then JSON data operator, this time where we have a string as a key. We're going to return uh, O bound, the object at the key. If we were to return a pointer, we would have to uh, do this. We would have to return uh, the address of the value. Um, and when we return a pointer, that means that the caller of this method owns the value. Uh, so if we call this method from main, that main method would own the memory that stores this value. But that's not what we want. We want this class to store the value. Uh, so when we return by reference, we're returning a reference to the address. 
so that this class maintains ownership over the value. And when we change it in the main method, so if we did something like uh, uh, JSON, or if we had like a JSON data D, uh, and we said D at uh, name, or at employees uh, at zero at name is equal to Michael, that would change all of this, that would change the, the uh, D. It, it, but if, it, if we returned a pointer, if we made this a pointer, we would not be able to do that because you cannot modify a pointer. Like, uh, let me actually just go ahead and use, uh, if we, let, let, me, let me make this a pointer now. What you're gonna see is uh, that the, the expression that D employees must be a modifiable L value. When we return a pointer, we cannot modify that immediately. We would have to say D employee, or we would have to create another another variable, JSON uh, data E is equal to D. Oh, nice truck. Uh, D employees, and then E is equal E at uh, that is equal to Michael, but that would not work uh, really because we don't want to. Uh, we we don't. We're just, we, th this is too complicated. It's more fluent, it's more Python-like to just have it like that. So that's why we, that's why we return by reference instead of, um, instead of returning a pointer. Look. I think that's all the methods I wanted. Oh, no. I actually wanted to um, um, okay yeah so we have these methods and the last method that we'll have to create is uh, getting the actual value of it, uh, of uh, of uh, of an object, um, and this is going to involve inheriting because if we try to do something like get val, what would what would we return? We can't distinguish. Uh, we, we can't distinguish different methods based on a return type. That's just not how C++. Oh my! That's just not how C++ works. Uh, so the way we would have to do this is hold on, my microphone is wobbly. All right, I'll try and fix that later. Um, so yeah, we can't have different methods that say standard string get val. Uh, we can't have a double get val as well, because these methods are only distinguished by return value. We can't do that. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create inherited classes, classes that inherit from JSON data, and their sole purpose is to return uh, return the specific value. Um, so it's going to be this will be relatively simple, um, but. Essentially, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to recreate a lot of those constructors uh, in specific ways. All right, so let's start with the first class, which is just string. So we're going to say class JSON string, uh, and it inherits from the public JSON data. Um, and we're going to say public. And the main val the main method that I want here is just standard string val. That's it. So when we inherit a class, we can distinguish uh, the method that we actually want. Um, this is going to. This is not very practical for now. Um, in the future, uh, I'm likely 
I, I'll likely create a follow-up video on this on how to uh, use override more operators with plus and plus equals and stuff like that um, to get rid of the need for a four, uh, this class here. Get rid of because this is the purpose of this class right now. Just have that value. Um, but once we get into but if we did that, we would have to have like twenty more new oper o operator overrides, and that would, that would get messy. Okay. Uh, we also have to create constructors, or, or do we? Uh, I don't know if we can. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're, we're going to have to go ahead and create constructors here as well. Um, so we'll say JSON string std string val, and that just initializes JSON data with val, like that. Uh, and then we'll also need it for const char. This is very tedious, I know. Um, but we have to do it so that we can have this value method here. I haven't uh, really worked on how to uh, do the operators, but so we'll just leave it. We'll, this is just our first attempt at it, um, but we'll we'll get it more precise in the future. Uh, and then the last constructor we'll need is actually just JSON string, uh, at, and when we pass in a JSON data uh, object, uh, we essentially just want to initialize. JSON data with D, uh, but now since it's of type JSON string, this this is essentially a cast from JSON data to JSON string. Um, but now we have access to this value method that returns a string. Okay, um, so we'll have to do this four more times after the other four types. So let's just power through. All right, class JSON num from public JSON data public uh, JSON now taking in, in a, a double value JSON data value uh, JSON now uh, int value and then JSON now Float val, and we just do the same thing. Uh, we can actually go ahead and copy this constructor up here because it, that's going to be the same thing for every class. So the constructor where we just pass in JSON data, but we just have to modify the uh, name JSON val, and then we'll need a val uh, method to double val, and it's going to return. That. Uh, next is boolean, so class JSON bool, public JSON data, public uh, JSON bool, bool val, uh, initialize the superclass of JSON data with val, and that's it. Uh, and then just return that method there, make it JSON bool. And then this time val val will val will return bool, and that's just going to be uh, return eval. Uh, second to last one is the list. Uh, so class JSON list public JSON data public uh, JSON list standard vector of JSON uh, data val initialize the superclass with val that's it you also have to have the constructor for the uh, initializer list so JSON list standard initializer list uh, of JSON data uh, val 
and then JSON data of val, just like that. And then we'll paste that method, that, that method again, change this to list. And then this time the val will return a standard vector of JSON data uh, val. And, and this will return uh, L val. Uh, however, with the list, we'll have to do we'll have to add another method that will allow people to actually add more stuff to the to the list. Uh, so void, and so it's going to be a void push method, and it's going to pass in JSON data val. Now we want to say L val dot push back val. That's all. So that's just one extra method that we can add to this inherent class. Uh, but once again. When we add the operator overrides, we could make this a plus equals, actually, so that would be something to look at too. And then finally, the JSON object. So class JSON object, and we're going to inherit from JSON data. Uh, in public, we'll have JSON object standard map of standard string keys mapped to JSON data values, and all we're going to do is just initialize the superclass with uh, val. Uh, and then the initializer list, so JSON object of standard initializer list of standard pairs uh, with const standard strings. JSON data with val, uh, and then that that uh, generic constructor that we need uh, change it to JSON object, and then finally uh, we want the uh, val method, which will return a standard map of standard string and JSON data, uh, and this will just uh, val will return o val like that and then we'll need another method like push um, but it's going to be uh well, actually no we don't need that because we have we overrode the operator up here so if we just do this we that this accounts for the push uh, but if we did the json list dot push that would work uh, as well <sighs> okay um No errors. So yeah, that's our header file. Now we actually have to work on the rest of the methods, which are the um, write or the uh, parse methods and the stringify methods. So that's going to be that's going to be pretty interesting. All right, so let's start with the easiest method, uh, which is just uh, get type. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new file and we'll call it uh, JSON data underscore data dot cpp. We're going to go ahead and include uh, JSON dot h and we'll use the JSON namespace as well. So using JSON uh, namespace using namespace JSON. Uh, we'll also need uh, util, so we can include uh, util.h, HPP, and then we'll also need to include uh, s string, string string, because we'll need that for the stringify stuff. Um, <laughs> The one thing I did forget to do in json.h is I wanted to uh, create two static variables in json bool just for true and false. So 
uh, it'll just be in JSON pool to create static standard string uh, for true, which is just equal to true, and static standard string uh, false, which is just equal to false. And these are just going to be the, for the, oh, we actually can't initialize them yet, because they're static. Uh, this is just for, um, oh, what did I do? This is just for, oh, I need to work up. Um, that's just for this, for the stringify stuff, so it'll make this easier to stringify. Um, okay, and then in JSON data, we want to define those. Uh, so the way we would define static variables is, we just say the types of standard string, and we just do the class of JSON rule, and it's going to be true. It's going to be true. And that's it. You don't have to put static anymore. It's just like that. And then for the false, we'll just be standard string, JSON rule, and it's going to be false is equal to false. I can't see that, can I? But regardless, this will all be on GitHub right after this stream. And if you're tuning in now, I do have this existing code in, in a GitHub repository. I'll put the link, I'll show it on screen. So it's uh, go here to my GitHub page and then slash programming. Um, go to CPP. JSON, and this is the source for everything that I'm doing now, and this is where I tested it. So if if you're if you are uh, kind of stuck on something, um, just go here. Otherwise, it's going to be otherwise this updated uh, code will be on GitHub uh, right after this stream. But yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some water. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's move on to 
the actual meat in the code because uh, up until now we've really just been initializing values we've just been adding template methods we haven't done much code itself we've just given a way uh, to store the values um, so in uh, JSON data .cpp, let's go ahead and start with the stringify method um, So the way that, the way we're going to do this is uh, we're going to want to have it pretty print as well. I didn't do this in my test, so this might not work, but we'll see. Um, so we're going to have a standard string, and it's going to be JSON data stringify, and we're going to pass in uh, a tab value. So uh, int tab uh, space which will default to four. Well, actually, let me define this in the header. So go back to json.h, uh, find the stringify method, and we're gonna add two parameters. So int tab space will equal four, and int, uh, hello. And then the second parameter will be int uh, uh, init, initial tab uh, position, which will equal zero by default. Uh, and then we'll just do int tab space and int init tab pose. So this is just all for pretty printing it. Um, so yeah. All right, so at the top, uh, just go ahead and define a placeholder for the return. Standard string ret or actually, uh, let's just do standard string stream. And then at the end, we'll just do return ret.str. Um, let me just go ahead and make sure I'm doing this right. Um, <laughs> Alright, uh... Uh, we're going to want to insert the tab spaces. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is... Um, how do I want to do this? You know, let's just... Let's just get rid of the tab space for now. Or... No, no let's jump into more. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a standard string. Um, and we'll just do... Call it a tab. And then we want to initialize the tab. So initialize... tab string. Uh, so for int i is equal to zero, i is less than tab space, i plus plus, uh, tab plus equals just a space. Um, I don't know any better way to do it right now, but that's all we'll do. Um, and then uh, initialize tab line, or indent line. Uh, so ret um, well, um, so what we're going to do is, uh, for int i is equal to zero, i is now less than init tab position, so we want to go as many tabs as it as specified, and i plus plus, and all we're going to say is ret, we're just going to pass in, oh, uh, put in caps, uh, we're just going to pass in uh, tab. Just like that. Alright, and then now uh, we want to go ahead and input element. Um, okay. So let's start uh, with... So we're going to essentially we're going to have to have a switch. Uh, because we're going to have to we're going to have to differ what we output into the string based on the type. So it'll be a switch of the type which is in this class here. Um, and the type will be uh, case uh, JSON type uh, JSON string. Uh, and I'll just break for now. Case JSON type JSON num. Break. Case JSON type uh, 
JSON pool, break, case JSON type, uh, JSON list, break, case JSON type, uh, JSON object, and break. Just that. Um, okay. Uh, so for string, all we're going to want to do is... Uh, er Okay, uh, for string, all we're going to want to do is just uh, return, or uh, we're, we're just going to want to input the string, but not just the string, because as you saw in data.json, uh, the strings are surrounded by quotations, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to input a quotation mark before and after the string, um, sval, because we're taking the string value, and that's it. Okay, uh, next, for the number, uh, it's simply just input the number, uh, so ret nval, and that's it. Uh, for boolean, uh, we're going to have to test uh, to see if it's true or false, if boolean is true or false. So we're going to have to say ret, and we're going to say, uh, we're going to do an inline if statement or a ternary operator, so bval, we're testing the bval, and if bval is true, we want to say, uh, JSON rule uh, true, otherwise JSON rule false. Um, yeah, just like that. Alright, for list, uh, it's not going to be too much, uh, but... Um, uh, all we're going to do is... Uh, let me just... Check this code here. Um, okay. So for list, uh, all we're going to say is uh, ret uh, the open bracket, and then at the end we'll do a, a ret uh, close bracket, just like that. Um, and. We're actually going to go ahead and create a new string, or a, a new string stream, uh, for that matter. So standard string stream uh, list stream, um, because you'll, you'll see why in a second. Uh, but essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to say for uh, JSON data data in LVAL, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say uh, list stream. Um, is going to um, how do I want to do this? All right, I'm going to say we're going to input data dot stringify, and we're going to input tab space, uh, and then we're going to say init tab position plus one, because when we do data dot stringify, uh, we want to go one tab in. So. Uh, when we did the list, we started the list, and then we did one more tab uh, beyond that. Um, and then after the actual element, we want to put a comma, uh, and then a end line. Um, but because uh, we don't want these on the last one, uh, we're going to have to create a substring. So we'll say standard uh, string list str is equal to list stream dot string and then we want to take a substring so list str at list str uh, is equal to list str dot substring uh, from zero to ret dot length minus uh, two because these extra character this final comma or um hmm Oh, this isn't ret, it's uh, list string dot length. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's just do minus two for now. Um, and then all we're gonna say is uh, return, uh, just input the list string, and then an end line. Just like that. Um, hold on.
I just want to make sure this tab is going to be correct. Oh, it's not, because this last thing will be, will be on the left side. It won't have any tabs, so we'll have to input the tab as well. Let's just put the initialization side. So if you don't know what I just did, um, I just because we have a new line, uh, this bracket would be on the complete left side. It wouldn't be indented, so we just have to add the indents uh, once again, like we did for the first one. Um, and that's automatic, we don't have to do that for each item because that's automatically done when we stringify it with the initial tab position. Right there. So yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the list and now let's do the object. Uh, so yeah. Um, so it's going to be somewhat similar. So the first thing we want to do is return, or uh, input a curly brace. And then we'll do the same thing as the list. We'll end it off by inputting tabs and then a closing curly brace right there. Like that. And then for... Um, do I want to do this? Yeah, okay. So we're essentially going to have the same exact thing. Or let me just... Secondary. I'll, I'll just make this a secondary stream and a secondary string because we'll be using it in two, in two different cases. Um, and then just replace all the list strings with secondary strings. Put, oh shoot, this is going to be, okay, the way we're going to do, in this one, we're going to actually input the tabs every time, uh, because, um, because the key comes first, and we're not just, the, we're not only inputting the data dot stringify, um, because, um, Here, let me just show it, show it to you. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll input a quotation mark, the key, so pair dot first, closing quotation mark, and then a, oh, let me actually just make this a uh, that. And then the closing quotation mark, colon, a space, and then pair dot second, dot stringify, because that's a type of, uh, um, because that's a type of JSON data, and we want to pass in tab space and initial and init tab post plus one like we did here in the list. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we just want to put a comma, and then an end line. And the one thing I did forget to do is we want to add an end line uh, after the opening braces. opening brackets uh, we'll be able to tweak this if something isn't right when we'll, we'll test it right after this how about we'll tweak it um, so you yeah, have secondary blah blah all good 
Uh, and then we want to do the same thing that we did uh, over here because we want to get rid of the extra characters so we can actually just copy and paste this over there. Um, that's right, and then that's all looking good, and then that should be all okay. <sighs> Alright, now let's go ahead and test this stringify right now. One thing I'm... Gosh, this is going to be... <sighs> Alright, let me actually just print this out in right now and just see if it works. So standard C out D dot string fine. I'm just trying to see if this is going to work, because I don't know if it, it'll probably throw us an error. <gasps> Look at that. Um, what? Oh, I have to... What? This is not doing it. Oh. Alright, so let's go through some of these errors. <laughs> well, some of them. All of them. Uh, go back to util.hpp. Make sure you drag the isNum method below str contains. Um, because because this me this method was not defined uh, at this time, so leave it right there. Um, read as an unknown override specifier. Where? I have no clue what that means. This thing's smoking? I, I, I didn't put one argument in there. I return a file name and val.stream. Let me just rescan this. Some of these errors are not showing up over here. Alright, let me try rerunning. Alright, val. Alright, let me just open and close or restart visual studio. I'm very confused at these errors. Unknown override specifier. Oh, it's because they're static. That's why. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes a bit. Of, that makes some sense. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new file and call it uh, just JSON util.cpp. The reason why we're getting these errors is because we cannot define static methods in in uh, in the header file unless it's an HPP file but because it's static we have to keep the definition in the header file like we did with the variables so what we'll do is we'll take the definition make that a semicolon and then in JSON util uh, we're going to include uh, JSON.h uh, and then we're going to say uh, let me see what the function definition is. That's going to be using namespace JSON. Uh, and then we're going to say JSON util. Oh, Let me see. What, I, I don't know what the definition is. Uh, it's JSON data uh, read. Okay. 
Uh, so JSON data returns and then JSON util read. Damn it. Dog. Shit. One second. Talking to stop barking. Hold on. your headers to match it so the parameters are the same and then uh, we can do the same thing with the right file <sighs> just put it uh, in the JSON util source file and we should be all good and you know, let's go ahead and run it hopefully no error and we get errors nice uh, we're still getting errors Declaration is what? How is that? Declaration is incompatible. What do you mean? Oh, because I don't declare JSON data. Son. All right. Uh, at the top of James, JSON, we're going to create a class callback just so it's the, just so the compiler knows it exists. So class JSON data up there, just so the compiler knows that JSON data is a class and it, and it exists. So let's go ahead and run it now. All right, good enough. God damn. Oh, great. We got a. Uh... What? these methods over <sighs> okay um, I guess I made a mistake uh, let's not do HPP let's just do util.h and we'll make a util.cpp file I guess it doesn't like that, but... But we can actually just copy all the function bodies into util.cpp. This is gonna get confusing, I'm sorry, but... So at the top of util.cpp, include util.h, just like that. And that should solve all of our... And then using, go ahead and say using name space. Or actually, just put a JSON in front of it, just so we can specify in front of them. JSON colon colon. Oh. Oh, and why is it static? That's why. That's another problem. We don't want it to be static. Um, so yeah, just put JSON colon colon in front of all the methods in the source file. And then in util.h, uh, remove the remove the function bodies because we don't want them and remove the static I, uh, identifiers in front of the write and read file methods um, so yeah I don't know why we couldn't do that I, I that might not work that might not fix it but um, and then in what Oh, and then json.h now has to include util.h, not util.hpp. And that should fix everything in... Nope. Damn it! 
Oh, yeah, just change that in data, JSON data.cpp as well. static there too. That's fine. Um, and we should be... Oh. JSON. Alright. Yeah, just make sure all the methods have the JSON namespace in front of them, and make sure that none of them are static. Now this should work. Frick! Oh, of course. Son of a bitch! Okay. Uh, let's put that simple body somewhere. Um... Uh... All it's gonna return is if I'm right, just JSON data. Just put an empty body there and now it's just Son of a bitch! Just return and <laughs> sorry. Nitpicking things are just killing me. Um, yeah, make sure that just for now we'll just keep the parse method like that. Now, That's looking good for now. But the problem with this is you don't want that. Because there's an extra tab in there. So Oh, I got it. I got it. Um go back into JSON data.cpp. Um we're gonna go ahead and in uh JSON object, make sure that you do I is less than init tab post plus one and do that in the uh, list as well. Wait, no. Because uh, what we saw was it was in line with the brackets and we don't want it to be. And then in paradox second dot stringify, we just input a zero for or just don't don't input anything because we don't need it. Because it's not necessary. And just now let's run it. we could do, or, so leave that tab space in zero there, so don't modify those parameters. What we could do is add another parameter uh, to see whether or not is, so what we'll do in json.h, uh, we'll add a boolean parameter uh, that tells us whether or not uh, it's in the dictionary. So bool uh, is dict val and that's just equal to false by, by default. Um, and then in JSON data, just want to add that parameter there. So bool is dict val. And if it is, uh, so if it is, then we don't want to have it. So then we don't want to indent. So if not is, God damn, is if is not is dict val, then then uh, do this. So I uh, don't want tabs or initial tab indent if dictionary value. So you'll see how this works in a second. And crap, or I just missed something. Oh, uh, makes it replace this zero with uh, init tab position plus one. And boom, uh, we still have this, great. Oh, but, and then pass in true, because it is a uh, thing. And then we should, there we go, perfect, all right, that works nicely. 
So the main change that I made was I just added another parameter uh, to uh, stringify. Bool is dict to val, and that's set default to false. And all I wanted to uh, do was just get rid of that initial tab spacing, um, because if it was there, uh, then uh, it would it would give us that space in between the key and the value, which we did not want. <sighs> nice. So that works out perfectly. So yeah, that's how you pretty print stuff. And, all right. So we have been live for an hour and 30. Let's see if we can actually power through the parsing method in an hour. Or in less than an hour. It might take more, but we'll see. Okay. just identify the type and identify the type based on first character um, so what this is going to do is uh, all we're going to say is um, we're just going to get the first character so char c is equal to val at zero um, so we're going to want to test all the different ones so uh, we'll start with strings so if so we'll need if something that gives us a string. We actually wrote a method for this, and we wanted to, and that was in util.h, and that's is that's this method. If the first and last match for string of quotes, that means that it is a string. Um, so the way we're gonna write this out is um, you actually close out all the files apart from JSON data. Just because that's the only one we'll be working right now. Uh, so if first and last match, we're going to say string of first uh, of the first character will be just a quote, and the last character will also be a quote. So if those match, um, is it? Oh, it's val. That's why. Or sometimes in JSON you might see that it's just a single quote instead of double quote, so we want to test that too, but you can't mix them. So, or first and last match of val, and then this time we're just going to do a single quote, so it's just uh, backslash quote. I hope that works. Yeah, it does. Uh, and then add a parenthesis there. So if either of these conditions are true, it's a string. So all we're going to say is uh, for... Um, we're just going to return a JSON string um, of the substring uh, of uh, uh, val.substring uh, from one, because we don't want that first quote, uh, to the uh, before the last quote. So it'll be string uh, or uh, val.length minus two, because if we just did val.length minus one, that would be that would give us the entire string, but because we want, uh, we don't want that, we just wanna get the minus two in there. Okay. All right, next, uh, we'll do number. So else if, uh, and we created another method for this, is num. So is else if is num, and if c is a number or a decimal place, uh, we is number, so we're just going to return a JSON number, and we're just going to pass in uh, standard uh, a to f, so a string to a, to a double, and we're just going to pass in a val dot c string uh, because it only takes a const char string or a c string. All right, next uh, we want to check for boolean. Uh, so, the way we're going to check for boolean to see if uh, if it's true or false, but it cannot be anything else. So, uh, else if uh, 
C is equal to T might be true, but we don't know yet. Uh, else, if C is equal to F might be false. Um, and if it is, uh, we want to say if uh, val is equal to uh, json bool true, then return json bool at true. Uh, and if it's if it might if it's false, we just want to say uh, if val is equal to json bool at false, then return json bool at false. And then default, if not, if we didn't find anything, we're just going to return an empty uh, data thing. Just we're, we'll be forgiving here. We could throw a bunch of text at them, just say, "Oh, you, you fucked up," um, but we can add that later on. But for now, we'll just return an empty dictionary. So let's actually go ahead and test the four things that we did uh, for now. So in main.cpp, let's go ahead and uh, we'll see. So let's go ahead and create a string. So standard string str. Let's start with a just a string. So uh, we'll do a backslash uh, quote backslash quote, and in it we'll just say this is a string. Um, and then when we want to print out, we want to say or let's create JSON data d is equal to JSON data static method parse str. And then we want to print out uh, d dot get type uh, space and then this stringify. So let's go ahead and print this out. All right, we got an error. Um, oh, get type was not a defined. Oh, I, we never did that. That's right. Um, so at the top of JSON data dot cpp, uh, go or below all the definitions. Just we're going to create a new method called and that returns standard string. And it's gonna be JSON data colon colon get type takes no parameters and we're gonna have a switch again so switch based on the case uh, we're gonna have case uh, JSON oh, um, not case switch on the type uh, case JSON type uh, JSON string uh, return uh, string case json type json num return number case json type json pool return uh, pool case json type uh, json list return list and then case json type json object Return uh, JSON object. Um, so maps, I, I may have said this earlier, but maps and dictionaries in JSON are technically called uh, JSON objects. So let's go ahead and now print and run this. Um, okay, string, this is a string, perfect. Let's test it for numbers. So let's say uh, we just pass in a five. Uh, number five, uh, let's put, oh, you know what I didn't do? In util, you have, we have to add negative numbers too. So in util.cpp, add the after the period, just put a dash for negative numbers um, because that can also be in there. So let's say let's try negative six, uh, point four or point five number, uh, uh, and then let's do point five. There we go, uh, and then finally. Uh, let's do true. Just make sure it works. Bool one, perfect. Oh, one. That's not what I wanted. Stringify. All right, go back to the stringify method. Um, bool. If it's a bool, we should not be returning. Hold on, is JSON, that's a string, why is it? Oh, it might be that. Well, no, it's taking, it 
set the type was bool. Hold on. I don't want one to come out. I want true and false. Um. Let me just go ahead and... Oh, I need to include IO stream. Hold on. I'm just going to do a b little bit of debugging here. Yeah, T. So return JSON pool. Alright, let me just see where it takes this. Over here. Um, so T true, Val is true. Let's step into this. Yeah, so... Why is it not... Why is it saying JSON num? That's weird. Um, maybe we have to move in JSON.h. We need to move the constructor above. We try. Don't don't touch your code yet. But let me just try and see if this works. If we move the constructor above. All right, I don't want this breakpoint. I don't really care. Hmm. That's weird that it's making it a number because it went to the correct constructor. Bval val. All right, let's go back to the stringify. Um, if it's a boolean, we just make sure it's. Let me, let me make sure it's going over here. Alright, so bval is true, so it should return or add on true, correct? Step over. Oh, maybe let me put this in parentheses. Maybe that'll work. Oh, yeah. Um, the reason why it was only putting the 1 and 0 is because it was just taking the bval and that was it. It wasn't considering the ternary operator. Um, okay. Alright, so yeah, that's the only change that you need to make. Just put the this ternary operator in parentheses. And it should all work. And... And then false. Let me just make sure that works too. Oh, okay. All right, perfect. All right, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of of the JSON parsing because now we have to actually figure out how to parse uh, lists and dictionaries. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, to tell if it's a list, we're, we're just gonna need to say uh, if first and last match of the string with uh, open and close square brackets. Uh, oh, not string, it's val. And so list. Um, and the last one for d maps is just else if first and last match, this time with curly braces. So this is a JSON object. All right, so let's do the list first because this will be easier. So um, when we do a list, uh, we're going to want to... I, I want to make this code as sufficient and as concise as possible. When we make a list, we're trying to find repetitive objects. And to find that object, we're going to have to go through each character and we're going to have to add it to some 
the string that's storing the value of, of the stuff that is, is an object. With a dictionary, it's pretty much going to be the same thing, except we're only looking for one object and one key. So what we're going to do is, uh, instead of uh, writing two separate for loops in both, we're going to create a new method uh, in json.h, and it's going to be uh, in the namespace. So, oh my... All right, in json.h, go to the top of the namespace. Under the class callback, uh, we're going to create a method to get object. Um, and it's going to return a vector, so standard vector of JSON data. Um, and we're just going to do a vector now just so we can reuse it twice. But with the dictionary, we're going to have to just take the first element of the vector. But it's this is easier just to make it so we don't have to rewrite the code twice. Um, so I'm going to call it get obj, and it's going to take in uh, five parameters. So it's going to be standard string, str. Uh, it's going to take a reference to uh, value i. This time we're going to be passing in by reference, which means that the, uh, the call, well, once again, the method now has ownership of this memory uh, bool oh sorry the method doesn't have ownership uh, when we pass in by reference that means that the callee the person who's calling or the, the caller has has uh, has ownership of the memory so we're essentially taking a reference to some variable I uh, we're gonna say bool break after add and this is uh, default to false uh, int last I offset uh, is equal to 1, and then bool and bracket is equal to false. So let's go ahead and copy this definition into jsondata.cpp, and we're going to go ahead and right above parse, just input this method there. Uh, make sure you put the identifier, so JSON data colon colon, and then get rid of all the default uh, values there and then replace the semicolon with uh, brackets. And this should all... Oh, it's just JSON. Oh, we don't... We actually don't need that because it's it's only in the namespace. <sighs> okay. Let me see. Where we are right now. Alright, yeah, we're gonna go a bit over two hours. This is gonna... This might be our longest stream now, but... So in get object, we're going to have a return placeholder, so standard vector of JSON data ret, and then we're going to return ret. Uh, and then we're going to have a couple of variables on top. So char c, just nothing, st standard string val. Uh, we're going to have bool item open is equal to false. Bool uh, quote open is equal to false. Uh, standard string open delimiters so this is going to involve delimiters which are just like uh, let me just go uh, delimiters delimiters are like uh, they, they, they essentially just specify the boundary between the independent regions in, in data in a string and oh I just opened Visual Studio Code uh, and we'll be doing that with the brackets and the curly braces uh, so open delimiters and then standard string uh, so let's actually assign the open delimiters. So open delimiters is simply going to be equal to just an open square brace and an open curly brace. And likewise, the closed delimiters is, is just going to be a closed square brace and a closed curly brace. Um, something. Oh, and then end off the quote there. Okay, um, now let's get into the loop. So I'm just going to write out a lot of this code without explaining it, and then once it's all done, I'm just going to explain it all together. Uh, so for, we're going to have an empty first condition, because we're passing in reference by i, so i will already have an initial value. We're going to say i is less than uh, str.length minus last i offset i++. So last i offset is going to differ between 
uh, the dictionary and the list based on what we're doing. Let me actually just check something. I just need to make sure that. Um, right. Okay. Let me just make sure this works good. All right. So we the last lie offset is going to differ between uh, the two. All right. We want to get C. So C is equal to. STR at I. Um, all right, so the first condition is going to be if is empty uh, and C, that's another method we defined, and we just want to continue. Um, but actually, there's one special condition. Uh, we want to ignore the white space unless in string. Uh, so if uh, quote open, or in string, uh, we just want to say uh, val plus equals c. And let's just initialize val to an open uh, empty string right now. Um, okay, so if it's empty, uh, ignore it unless it's in a string. Uh, next we want to see uh, if, if it's a closed delimiter. So um, if let me, let me actually just check something. So if str at i minus 1, so if the preceding character is not a backslash, meaning it's not a, this character will not be an escape character, we want to process it as a delimiter. Because if there is a backslash in front of it, uh, we want to see... Um, Because if, if it is a backslash, um, then the delimiter will be an escape character and it's not going to be valid. Um, Alright. So this will be useful for when we're in strings. So, uh, if, it, if it is a valid character, we want to see if C is equal to uh, a double uh, quote. Are you... Um, I should actually get rid of the uh, uh, check for double for single quotes too because that kind of contradicts this. Uh, so in parse, just make sure it's first and last match for strings only double quotes. Um, I'm not sure if single quotes work in JSON. Just in general, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Though. All right. So if C is a double quote, um, we're going to want to say uh, open count plus equals, uh, quote, open, did I, oh, oh, I never actually, I, ne I never initialized that, so at the top, just say int open count is equal to zero, and this will just keep track of the delimiter, so if this, if, if this number ever gets back to zero, we're going to know that everything is closed up, because when we open something, uh, we're going to, Oh, hold on. Uh, let, me, let me just write this line. So open count plus equals quote open, and then we're going to do a ternary operator. So if quote is open, uh, we want to subtract one because we're going to be closing it, so we want to close a delimiter. Um, we're going to have a closed delimiter. Otherwise, we want to do one. And just put that in parentheses as well. Um, and if it is, uh, we just want to reverse uh, quote open. Uh, is equal to not quote open. So this is just a quick way to reverse a boolean. Um, so essentially, if, we, if the quote is open and we run into a, a valid quotation mark, uh, we want to subtract one from the open count because we run into a closed off section, a section that closes off. Um, all right. Next, uh, if string contains uh, open delimiters, and if open delimiters contains C, so open section. And the same thing will go for else if str contains closed delimiters, and C. And this will be closed section. So if the section is open, uh, all we're going to say is just open count plus plus. 
And if it's a closed delimiter, we just want to subtract it. So open count minus minus. Alright, there's one boolean that we can actually remove, and that's item open. We won't need that. Uh, Alright, so after this, after this uh, if statement, so uh, verify character cannot be escaped. Um, um, so after that, uh, we want to deal with. We, we want to essentially add it to. We, we want to determine if this is all done. So. Uh, if open count is equal to zero and val is is not equal to something empty and c is equal to either a comma or end bracket and c is equal to a uh, close brace. So I'll explain this in a second. It looks messy, but Hold on. Um, so in this case, we're going to say ret dot push back uh, JSON data parse uh, val uh, empty val and if break after add, we're going to go ahead and return just like that. And if this condition is not met, else uh, we're going to say val plus equals c. And then after everything is done, uh, this will be in the case of a list. Uh, we just want to add the last item. So ret dot push back uh, JSON data parse uh, that. So the reason why we're doing this is because uh, the list will end, but we'll we'll still have a value in the val. Uh, yeah, so that's all. All right, so let me go ahead and explain this a little bit. So let's start from the top. So for uh, for a uh, list, all of these values will resort to their default. So break after add will be false. Last i offset will equal uh, one as a default because we don't want to go to the end of the string. Um, and then bool end bracket will also be false because we want to continue. Uh, so let's just go through each of these parameters quickly. So break after add. Uh, if we break after add, uh, we only want one item. That means we want a single item. And that's what we want for the dictionary. And that's that's when we're going to return the vector that only has one item in its in its container. Um, last I offset, uh, like I said, uh, with lists, you don't want to go to the end. Uh, but for uh, dictionaries, you you will want to go to the end, but you won't get there. It, it's it's uh, this is through trial and error. It might not make sense now, but it. If you do try and write these separately, it will make sense. Um, and then end bracket, uh, this just determines to see if C is equal to uh, a closed curly brace. And that means it's the end of the dictionary. And for a dictionary, end bracket will be true. Um, but if it's false, it won't matter for a list. OK, so that is pretty much the biggest part of our parsing method. And, that, and that's the most complicated. I, I might post a new video on, on explaining that further, but we'll, we'll see for now. All right, so the list method will be relatively simple. It's actually just that method. So all we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a parameter i, which is just equal to 1 for now. Uh, we're going to say uh, standard vector, or um, let's just go ahead and say return uh, json list of get object um, or we can yeah just get object or actually let's just go ahead and say return get object um, of str and i just like that or not str val um, yes yeah, so that's the list that's pretty simple um, and then for the dictionary now this is going to be a little different because Dictionaries are not only lists, they're lists of pairs. So we're going to have to parse out the first part of the pair in order to get the value. We're going to have to get the key first. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, int i is equal to 1, just like the list. 
we're going to say standard string key is equal to nothing and json data value uh, and then standard map as a placeholder for the return so standard string and json data rent and then at the end we'll return Um, so, in between the two, we want to have a while loop. So, while i is less than str.length. Uh, so, we're going to say uh, get key. And make sure this is not str, this is val. I keep typing str because that's what's in my test. Um, okay. So, uh, we're going to say c is equal to str and i. And we're going to go ahead and get the... God, I keep saying str. Val. So we're going to go ahead and get the first character. So while is empty, c, and i is less than str.length, just to make sure that we don't go above. Um, c is equal to str. Oh, val. c is equal to val at plus plus i. When we put the plus plus in front, uh, all we're doing is we're incrementing the value and then we're take and then we're returning the value. So we're going to increment the i by one and then take the i th character, the the i plus one character. Um, all right. All right. So if the first character is not a quote, so if c does not equal a put quotation mark, uh, we just want to break um, because uh, invalid key. Um, and then next we're going to want to say c is equal to str at plus plus i val at plus plus i we're going to want to get the next character again and then we're going to want to find the end of the string so find end of string so the value will be in the string so long as c is not equal to uh, a quotation mark and the it's not an escape character so string val at i minus one does not equal a in the uh, backslash so it's not an escape character uh, while c not quote not valid so while it is uh, we just want to say key plus equals c Actually, we can make this into a for loop. Let's let's do some let's do some advanced for loop here. Uh, so for uh, empty first condition, we're gonna say we're gonna copy this there. Uh, so the the end condition will still be the same. Uh, and then the increment uh, will just be c is equal to val at plus plus i. So yeah, we can condense this into a for loop. I have it in a while loop in my test, but we can actually just condense that. All right, uh, next we're gonna wanna implement the string again. So C is equal to str at plus plus i. Uh, and then next we're gonna wanna skip to item and make sure that it's val again. I'm gonna start yelling profanities if I keep doing that. Um, so skip to item, that means so while, is empty c uh, or c is equal to a colon and we're just gonna oh we can actually make this or let's just do it so c is equal to str plus plus i it's not good to put uh, my temper is flaring with this freaking thing here okay So we're going to skip to the item, and then uh, we're going to say standard vector of JSON data at red v, um, because we're going to want to store the vector, 
that is equal to get object of the val i break after add is true the i offset is zero and end after bracket is also true uh, and then after that uh, we're going to want to increment i and then we're going to uh, want to say ret at key is equal to ret v at zero. Because remember, we if it's a dictionary, we break after we add a single item to the vector. And then we want to reset the key. Uh, and then value is equal to json, just an empty json data right there. Uh, and then return ret. All right, so this should all work out uh, right now. So let me go back to main.cpp and let's go ahead and test it using the file we created. So we have in data.json, we should essentially see this again. So let's go into, but I know it's not going to. Um, so JSON data, uh, or JSON data D will be uh, JSON util, and we're gonna read, and we're gonna pass in the file name of uh, data.json. And we don't need the type because we know it can do that properly. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. Hopefully this works. Um, all right, so we had unresolved external parse. Um, hmm. Get object is not defined, it is. Oh, I just need to make it JSON. All right, so in JSON data.cpp, make sure you just add the namespace identifier before get object, that method we wrote. All right. Shit. Oh, so this means the list thing. Wait a minute, no, that might be the key. No, that's a dick. Okay, I think I did something wrong with getting the key. Ah, oh, 207, great. Wonderful. Alright, let me just make sure, I'm gonna run my test code real quick. this all works properly. Yeah, I don't, it's just not reading the list. But, well, let me see if... Right, let me run this just to make sure it works. Unless it might be a problem with the stringify, but let's see. No, I don't. No, no, it's not a problem with the stringify. The stringify work. method that we wrote is not working for the dictionary. No, I don't know if it was working. Ah, god damn it. No, let me just try it. Let me just make sure it's working for a list too. 
So let me just go ahead and delete that. And I'll just make it. Okay. So it works for lists. That's good. All right. So it has to be a dictionary problem. I was running into problems with the dictionary. Um, let me just... Maybe if I add one to I here, that won't work. I'm just gonna... I, let, let me just see if I right now. Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and debug. So I is currently 16. Let's see if that's... So 16 is the first list, which is right. So let's go into this. I can't make this bigger, I'm sorry. I hope you guys can see that. Right, so let's go into it. Let's get objects. Get rid of the variables. Good. Last my offset is zero. So C is now equal to the open bracket, right? It's not an e. Alright, so add one to the open count. It's not gonna be there. Let me just go ahead and actually. I'm just gonna go ahead and oh, so it just never gets there. Maybe let me try this. All right, let me get rid of that. Nope. Oh, it's replaying. We've actually we've actually gone through the entire thing. All right, no, we haven't. But all right, I'm just gonna turn this off for now. Okay. Um, crap. I don't know why this isn't working. It has to. Oh, shit! Son of a bitch. All right, so I... Let me see what... Hmm. Let me see if it ends up there. That might be the issue. Here, let me just... Uh, if uh, break after add, because this will be true for a dictionary. All right, so let me just see what happens. Oh, so I want to find the rat. All right, red has a size of zero. That's not good. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Let me see what this string is. Oh, that's why, because it has the extra thing over there. Um, so maybe, maybe if I make it one? That might do it, because I would be able to get rid of that parameter altogether. So I'm just changing the last I offset to one to see if that works. 
Oh. Mm, it gets the list, but it. Where did where did the third? There's only two. All right, no, I have to keep that at zero. So for some reason, it's adding that last character there. Which is something we don't want. But I don't know why it is. Um, I'm just gonna make this really short. Or let me just get rid of this there and that. Just so I can see if it'll do it there, but we'll see. Did it run into an error? Okay, let me just get rid of these breakpoints real quick. Oh, there's an infinite loop. Um, where? Why would it have an infinite loop? What is the uh, end bracket? <sighs> That's weird. Why would there be an infinite loop somewhere? Okay, so that works, but it's not reading the, but why, why would it not read the boolean? Out of all things, it's not gonna read the boolean, really? All right, vowels, that, 30, Puerto Rico, oh shit. Oh, it didn't read. This is hard to debug. God damn it. Um, okay. So it's not reading the last property. So that's where, where we're just getting screwed. So it has to do with this condition here. So let me see this. Uh, if val is equal to true, or val is equal to tru, just to see. Just to see how that works out. All right, so Alexander, 30, Puerto Rico. So it just doesn't. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to see when it returns. So it returns when val is equal to nothing. Let me just go ahead and put that after so I can see what this looks like. Alexander. What? That was the first value. Hold on, let me make sure it's zero. Um, Thirty, Puerto Rico. All right, so it just doesn't return the manager. 
Oh, because uh, I'm tempted to, but let me try that. That's not going to work. I'm not going to change anything. 30, where do we go? Yeah. Okay. Um. Let me just print out the value uh, every time. Oh. Oh, well, I'm an idiot because I If val <laughs> All right, um, step over. All right, so val is equal to false. Open, oh, it's open count is less than or equal to zero. I don't know why it subtracted one more. Oh, because uh, this was, this, this should work. Let's go! Mm. All right, I need to fix the thing again, but who cares? I don't really care. All right, let's go ahead and test the original one just to make sure it works. All right, run. And I'm going to show you the test. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Oh, yes. All right, there's something wrong there, but I don't, I don't care right now. Um, it works. All right, so the reason why I had to do less than or equal to zero is because it ran into that closed bracket, that closed curly brace, and it counted it as a closed delimiter, so it just subtracted it to negative one. Um, but that, that's, I, I don't know why, but that's fine. I don't really care. Um, Okay, let's test, Let, let's figure out why it was printing like that. So that's in the stringify method. Um, so, um, in the beginning, let me see where it, where the stringify went wrong. So it was on the first and last thing there. So for each thing, or for each object, so did, Right, uh, we have the tabs, so we get the curly brace, and then it just went way too far with the first one. Oh, you know why? Because I'm I need to make this go to sec stream. That's why. Um, now this should work. Perfect. There we go. All right, so the only thing I changed was that I was making all the tabs go into ret, which I then input the string, so there were like six tabs instead of having the tabs distributed across each item. All right, that is JSON library in C++, a language that does not have native support for JSON, like JavaScript, like Java, like Python. Uh, there are other JSON libraries out there, but this one I think is pretty concise, and I just wanted to do it on my own just to see how I could do it. Um, so yeah, that is JSON. This has been our longest stream, actually. Um, I'm going to commit this to GitHub right now. And I will leave you guys off with some nice music. And uh, so yeah, I will see you guys uh, in the next stream, which might be later this week. Might continue with OpenGL, but we'll see. Bye. Oh, hold on. I need to... Um, yeah, all right. Adios.